Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Joseph, uh, Marcelo, Paolo, and the other organizers of the uh, Logic Seminar for giving me the opportunity to present my work uh, despite of these uh, difficult times. Uh, thank you all for joining this seminar. I know that is not the usual day of the seminar, but still I am ha very happy that uh, you are here. Uh, and as Joseph has said, I, I hope that we will meet soon face to face in some scientific meeting or whatever. Um, I hope looking at the bright side of the situation, if, if there is any bright side in this situation, I really hope that uh, Following this crisis, there will be some uh, opportunity to extend remote uh, collaborations and other ways of long, long uh, distance uh, co cooperations. Um, a few months ago, I met uh, Marcelo and uh, Paolo and Pere in a workshop in Vienna and uh, about uh, belief revision and argumentation. And this is a kind of follow-up talk to what I presented there. Uh, concerning proof theoretical deductive method to uh, argumentation. So the idea to, is to incorporate proof theoretical notions like Gensen sequence and incorporate it in uh, uh, argumentation theory uh, and to gain some insights on, and, and the techniques from uh, proof theory and to apply to uh, argumentation theory. Uh, so uh, the uh, I actually, I planned this talk for, for a little bit longer time, but, but anyway, um, um, I hope that will, I will manage to do some part of this, uh, of this uh, uh, plans. I will start with uh, describing some basic on sequence based argumentation. Then I will go on to uh, presenting dynamic proof systems, uh, which extend uh, the usual uh, proof systems with uh, attacks and so forth to accommodate them and to, uh, to, to make them uh, um, appropriate for non-monotonic reasoning like in the, in the argumentation uh, setting. I will show some relations to reasoning with maximal consistency. Uh, probably I will skip the postulate-based postulate study. I will, if you want, I can present it uh, some in some other times. I, I, I don't think that you will have some uh, time for this, and then I will uh, conclude and, and say a few words about uh, future work. Uh, the, this uh, 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 seminar is based on some uh, uh, papers that have been recently published. Mainly, this is a joint work with uh, Christian Strasser, and some of the parts of this talk are also based on the work with Anne-Marie Borg, which is now uh, in Utrecht. Uh, she was a PhD a student of Christian and mine. Um, OK, so let's start uh, with some preliminaries. Um, Sequence-based logical argumentation is, is, is as, as, it, as its, its name suggests, it's first, first of all based on some underlying logic. By logic, I mean a pair of uh, language, I will assume that the language is propositional, and a consequence relation, task and consequence relation, that is re reflexive, monotonic, and uh, transitive. Uh, in the sequel, I will not uh, assume any particular form of the, of the language, so it's, it's, it need not be a standard propositional one, uh, but I will assume some some be, some well behavior of the of the of the standard connectives. Uh, so, for for instance, uh, a negation uh, should behave as it should have this weak uh, requirement. Requirement P should not imply its negation and vice versa. Uh, the usual uh, rule for conjunction. If we have implication, I will assume that it is deductive and equivalence will just be an abbreviation for uh, this, uh, uh, for, for the, if using the, the uh, uh, implication. Um, so given a, lo a logic, uh, what we, we, we will assume that arguments are represented by sequence. And what is a sequence? With sequence is just an expression of the form gamma double arrow delta, where we assume that gamma and delta are finite sets, and the double arrow is a new symbol that, that it does not appear in the language. Now, an argument is a 
um, um, a sequence with a single conclusion, and the only assumption about argument is that the conclusion follows according to the underlying logic from the premises. Uh, so the, the right hand side fo follows from the uh, left hand side of the uh, sequence. Now an argument is based on a, a knowledge base if the uh, premises, the, the, the support set is a subset, the support set is, uh, namely gamma is a subset of the knowledge base. Uh, an example we can take, of course, classical logic with a, a very simple knowledge base that it is inconsistent, and then we have arguments like P implies P, uh, P uh, Q implies uh, the conjun their conjunction, uh, P or not P is, is implied by the empty set, and so forth and so on. Uh, the idea is to use here a proof theoretical view of arguments, namely that we do not, uh, we hardly do not assume anything about the arguments except that the support implies the conclusion. In argumentation frameworks, it was usually uh, assumed uh, uh, that the, sometimes it, it is assumed that the language is classical logic or some uh, constraints are uh, enforced on, on the support set, like sometimes it is assumed that the argument support is uh, minimal, minimal, uh, the minimal set that implies the conclusion or that it is uh, consistent. Here we don't want to assume anything about uh, the, the argument except, as, as I said, that the uh, support implies the conclusion. Just like you do not assume anything else about sequence. The reason is that there are many advantages of this uh, uh, approach because it, it will be easier to identify and construct arguments um, uh, by, by, the, by, by lifting all those uh, assum uh, assumptions. Okay, so uh, the left hand side, as I said, will be called the, the support set of the conclusion of the, of the uh, argument and the right hand side is the conclusion of the, of the uh, argument. Now, uh, since we do not assume anything about uh, arguments as, uh, apart of the fact that there are uh, that they follow the, the, deduct the deduction uh, of the underlying logic, we can apply the usual uh, mechanism of, may, uh, of, of uh, constructing uh, arguments or sequence from a, a proof uh, theory. Okay, so we can use just inference rules in which we have this uh, set of uh, assumptions and then the uh, conclusion of the of, of the rules and then we can use just the standard standard uh, proof systems to construct arguments for instance we can use the well known uh, gensen system lk for classical logic and by this use the this inference rule to construct uh, arguments from simpler uh, arguments. So you can just use the machinery that we already have in proof theory and adopt it to uh, argumentation theory. Um, however, in argumentation theory, we also have the notions of attack, attack between arguments and counter arguments. And for this, we extend proof system with uh, elimination rules. So we, now we don't only, we do not only have inference rules, but we also have elimination rules. And elimination rules look like this. So they have the same structure as inference rules. So we have the conditions and the conclusion. And the idea is, is as follows. We, we want to, uh, we, we assume that gamma, we want to express by an elimination rule an attack of argument gamma one implies delta one on an argument gamma n implies delta n and the, and of course here we have we will have some uh, conditions from the attack and the consequence of the attack is that the attacked arguments is eliminated okay so for instance attack by undercut uh, means the following. Suppose that we have an argument gamma 1 implies psi 1 and suppose that 
Uh, we have another argument. Gamma two, gamma two prime implies, uh, implies uh, gamma uh, psi two. And we know that the conclusion of the attacking argument is equivalent to the negation of some parts of the support of the attacked argument. In this case, we can eliminate the attacked argument. So we can apply the undercut rule in order to eliminate the attack attacked argument. For instance, if we go back to the previous example, uh, we know that we have a KB1 based argument like P, uh, P implies P and not P implies not P. And here, and, 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 and here we can see that, for instance, not P implies not P attack according to, un, uh, uh, to, to undercut uh, argument like P implies P because you see, because the, uh, the condition is met. So the conclusion of the attacking argument is equivalent to the negation of the, here, the support of the attacked argument. So here in this case, the uh, argument in green attacks the, atta the argument in red, and by similar uh, uh, reason, the same argument also attack uh, the, the uh, argument P, Q implies P and Q and so forth. Okay, and there's a lot of uh, attack rules in the literature. I, I, I described undercut, uh, direct undercut is similar like un uh, to undercut, except that the attack is on, uh, uh, the equivalence is with respect to a specific uh, support and not to, uh, with respect to a set of uh, uh, in, the, in the in the support uh, defeat, for instance, is is a similar uh, follow a similar idea, but with a, a weaker condition. So instead of equivalence, we just uh, replace it with uh, implication. Uh, consistency undercut uh, is just a rule that uh, says that if we can identify. Uh, um, a contradiction within the, uh, which is a subset of the of the support of the attack rule, then we can eliminate uh, the attack rule. And there are many other uh, attack rules uh, in, in the literature that can be represented in this uh, kind of uh, sequence based uh, formalization. Now we can uh, just uh, construct sequence based argumentation framework as uh, as, as, as usual, so we have a, a knowledge base. We construct the arguments that are based on this uh, on this knowledge base, and we have a set of attacks. And then we can just uh, construct from this uh, an, an argumentation framework. Okay. For for instance, going back to our canonical example, here is part of course part of the uh, of the of the. Um, uh, argumentation frameworks. We see all those arguments here in the nodes are uh, based on KB1, and you see you see here attacks between the arguments. That in this case, in this case, the, the attack is based on uh, undercut, and we call this a uh, sequence-based argumentation framework. Once we have this framework, we can apply Dung, the usual Dung style uh, semantics on it. So I will uh, very quickly go over it. So uh, uh, we say that a, a set of a sequence attacks an argument. Uh, if one uh, as a argument in the set attacks the, the, the relevant argument. So for instance, here the green argument uh, attacks the red one. Um, a set defendant argument if any attacker of um, an argument is counterattacked by the set. So for, for instance, here you see the green argument defends the red argument because it attacks the only arguments that attack, attack that, uh, which is which attacks the, the red argument. Uh, conflict freeness means that a set does not contains two arguments that attack each other. So, for instance, this green uh, uh, argument consists of, of uh, a singleton set which is constantly uh, free, free. Admissible extensions uh, are uh, conflict free sets that defend all of their arguments. So, for instance, you see here that the green, the, the green uh, arguments in this set indeed uh, defend themselves. Uh, so, this is an, an admissible uh, extension of this, this framework. 
However, they, they, there is another argument that they uh, defend, which is that Q implies Q. So if we, we add Q implies Q to this set, we get a complete extension. So a complete extension is admissible extensions that contains all the arguments that it defends. And as usual, once we have complete extensions, we can define uh, a, some specific kinds of uh, extensions that are of interest. Preferred extension is a maximally uh, with respect to subset relation complete extension. A stable, so here we see uh, the two, there are two preferred um, extensions in this uh, 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 framework. Stable extensions. Uh, a, stable, a stable extension is a complete extension that attacks all the arguments that are not in it. Not in it. Here again, the preferred extensions are also uh, the uh, stable st extensions because they attack all the rest of the uh, argument. And a uh, grounded extension is a minimal complete extension. In this case, uh, we again you can see the uh, two uh, sequence that that form the grounded extension in, in this case. Why, once we have this, uh, this uh, 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 semantics, we can uh, define entanglement relations. Uh, so there are different entanglement relations. For instance, we say that K, the knowledge base entails according to a semantic. So, so we fix a semantic, a, a complete semantic, rather semantic, preferred semantic, or stable semantic. And there are, of course, other kinds of semantics in the literature. Once we fix a semantic, we can, we can define an entanglement relations as follows. For instance, we can define a skeptical entailment according to semantic as follows. KB entails Psi. If there is an argument in all the uh, extensions that, uh, that, that, that belong to the semantics, uh, so if there, there is an, uh, an argument in the, in, in the intersections of all the extensions of the same semantics, we, uh, where the conclusion of the arguments is uh, fine. OK, a similar uh, a definition, which is it's still a, a, a skeptical one, uh, is uh, the following, which is a, but it is li a little bit more liberal. We can we say now that KB implies Psi if for every um, uh, extensions of the semantics, there is an argument such that uh, the conclusion of the arguments is Psi. So obviously this is a a weaker uh, requirement than the previous requirement, uh, but this is a, a different kind of uh, entailment uh, relation. And of course, we can define the credulous uh, approach uh, according to which Psi is, follows from KB if there is an argument in the union or in, in some extension uh, where the conclusion of this uh, argument is, <coughs> sorry, is Psi. And uh, now if you go back to the uh, to the our uh, running example, you, you see that the, uh, as I said, the green uh, colored node are the grounded extensions. So, so for instance, in this case, we, we can see that according to the uh, uh, grounded extensions, know that since, since the, we, there is one uh, a grounded extension that then the two kind of uh, skeptical entailment coincide in this case because there is only one grounded extension. So according to each one of them, we can conclude uh, P or not P and we can conclude uh, Q because you see that um, indeed uh, in the in the in the uh, single uh, grounded uh, extension, there is an, an, an a sequence in, in which whose conclusion is Q. So we can conclude Q. However, we cannot conclude P, and we cannot conclude not P in this case uh, as expected. Okay. Um, so this is the way that we do inferences in uh, sequence based uh, argumentation systems. In, here is an, another example. Now we can take uh, a little bit more complicated example. So here we have a, 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 a knowledge base which consists of, you see here, this is the, the inconsistent uh, fragment of the knowledge base. R is not related to this fragment. Uh, and if we take uh, classical logic and uh, direct defeat and uh, consistency is undercut, we have some. Uh, here are some of the uh, of the uh, um, uh, sequence in this case, and actually we have three preferred and stable extensions, which you can see here. 
this is one extension, this is another extension, and this is the a third extension. And as you can see in all of these extensions, uh, A1 belongs to all of these extensions. So uh, we can conclude R here because R is in the conclusion of A, A, of A1. However, we cannot conclude P for instance, or Q because uh, they are not, uh, the, the, there is no sequence in the intersections of these uh, uh, extensions, preferred stable extensions, in which uh, um, uh, P or Q or, or the other uh, uh, formulae uh, belongs to the to the conclusion of this uh, uh, sequence. Uh, here is another example. As I said, since we do, do not confine ourselves to a specific. Uh, a language, then we can uh, also incorporate modalities and so forth. This example is based on S4, for instance, with direct defeat, and we have this kind of uh, knowledge base. And again, we can construct the uh, uh, the arguments uh, that follow from this knowledge base. This is part, of course, part of the argumentation uh, 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 framework that, he, that is obtained in this case. And again, we have, in this case, four uh, preferred and stable extensions, and we can make uh, inferences according to these uh, extensions. I will, be, I will come back to this uh, example uh, later on. Okay, now uh, a, a few words uh, about dynamic proof, and I think this is one of the main things that I want to present in this, uh, in this talk, in addition to the general uh, sequence-based argumentation. So how do we, can we reason with sequence based argumentation by uh, using some methods from uh, proof theory. So we want to use proof systems. However, uh, as you can, as you all know, the entailment relations that I've just described are non-monotonic. So we cannot use ordinary proof system, but we, we should use what we call dynamic proof system. So the dynamic proof system are based on the sequence calculi and the attack rules. And the idea is that unlike standard or ordinary uh, proof systems, once we derive a sequence, it is not, we, 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 it's not, it, not necessarily that it is what we call finally derived or finally accepted because it, it can be attacked by other uh, arguments. So we have to be cautious in that respect. Although we can derive some arguments, it's not always the case that der the derived arguments are reliable. So we have uh, at each step of the derivation, we have different uh, statuses for each sequence. It's either accepted or derived. It can be eliminated. Uh, namely, it, it is attacked by an, a, a, another accepted uh, a sequence, and it can be finally derived. So, it, 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 in this sense, that it, we, we, we not not only derive this argument, but we can also trust the argument. So, it is accepted and cannot be eliminated in any extension of the derivation. This is the meaning of final derivation. I will give the formalities or more, more detailed explanation later on. So the idea is that uh, we keep statuses for each derived sequence and according uh, and according to these statuses, we maintain the proof. OK, and now we also have a, an entailment relation. We say we see we, we say that Psi follows from KB if there is a derivation in a dynamic proof system in which uh, there is a sequence which is finally derives and its conclusion is uh, Psi. This is this is this definition is just uh, the usual definition as uh, as uh, in the case of a standard sequence uh, proof systems. Let me give some 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 intuitive example of, of of the general idea. So suppose that we have a, a KB1 again this very simple uh, knowledge base consisting of P, not P and Q. And we use here a undercut as the single attack rule. Remember that undercut uh, that uh, assumes that the conclusion of the atta attacking rule uh, is equivalent to some 
uh, part, a negated part of the support of the attack tool. Um, so how can we uh, make uh, the dynamic derivation in this case? So let's let's uh, look at, at, at some example. So what can we do? We can we can uh, you first use LK because here uh, we use the classical logic. We can use LK to construct some some uh, 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 sequence. So P implies P, not P implies not P. P is equivalent to the negation to the double negation of P again using some uh, uh, rules from LK. And then we all can also apply the attack rule. So for instance, uh, you can see that since we have P implies P, and since we have the, ju the justification in tuple number three that P is equivalent to the negation of not P, then tuple number one, P implies P, attacks tuple number two according to the condition which is derived in tuple number three, and as a, sec as a consequence, we eliminate tuple number two, okay? So P implies P is not reliable anymore. Similarly, we can have the uh, reverse attack. So since we have P and not P implies not P in tuple number two, and since we can derive tuple number five, then there is uh, a justification that tuple number two can attack tuple number one because of the, the, the condition that is made according to tuple number five. So we, now we uh, eliminate the first tuple. So P should not imply P according, uh, so, so, so P implies P is, is, is eliminated in, in this uh, 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 proof. However, note that for Q implies Q, there are no attacks. Why this is the case? Because in order to attack Q, Q implies Q using undercut, what we must have, we must have a, a, a tuple in which his, which, which uh, the, the conclusion of the, 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 the sequence should be not Q. In order to attack Q, Q implies Q, we should derive a sequence whose conclusion is not Q. In order to derive a sequence whose conclusion is not Q from KB1, we must have in the support set inconsistent, inconsistent set. So the support of any tuple that uh, whose conclusion is not Q must include P and not P. In this case, the, uh, the, uh, this so-called attacking tuple will be counter-attacked by the sequence in tuple, tuple number five. So any attempt to derive a, a, a sequence whose conclusion is not Q will be counter-attacked by the, by, the, um, by the sequence in tuple number seven because the uh, allegedly attacking uh, uh, sequence must contain P and not P. And here we see that P and, P, P and not P uh, it shouldn't hold, okay? So in, in, in some sense, tuple number seven defends tuple number eight from any possible undercut attack, and therefore the tuple number eight is finally derived in this case, okay? So this resembles the situation in the argumentation system. You see that P implies P and not P implies P attack each other. Therefore, tuple number four and tuple number six uh, represent elimination cases of the original tuples or, or the original sequence or the original argument. However, tuple number eight, whose sequence is Q implies Q, cannot be attacked because it is defended from any undercut attacks by tuple number seven. Uh, Oh, sorry, more, may I ask uh, yes, a question? Yes, yes. Uh, so this is only, sorry, this is only an intuitive uh, explanation. So uh, probably you have many questions at this point, but uh, please go ahead. Uh, just, just a quick one. I, I recognize some strategies here from uh, from other bits and pieces of non-montonic reasoning. Um, are you allowed to select a strategy in which you uh, exclude only one among uh, uh, not P uh, implies not P or P implies P. 
Yeah, in this case, you are excluding them both because you're saying each is attacking the other. But are you allowing cases in which only uh, one survives? Well, it, I think that it depends on the attack rules. If you can uh, express some attack rule that give, uh, for, for some reason, precedent to uh, uh, rules without negations or, or vice versa, then you can use this rule in order to give precedence to, to one attack over the other. So the, the, the situation will, won't be symmetric. According to undercut, in this case, the situation is totally symmetric. But of course, you can break the symmetry in many ways. One way is by using attacks. Another way, which I will not describe in this talk, but we, but which we use, is by uh, adding preferences, for instance, and then using the attack rule so that only preferred uh, sequence can be can attack the uh, less preferred sequence. So this is possible in many ways. It depends on uh, the way that you 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 prefer. So in principle, it 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 it, it is possible. Perfect. So you can use the same machinery, but you need to uh, incorporate different attack rules or um, or uh, meta language considerations like uh, preferences, etc. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So let me give some a little bit more details about how this. Uh, uh, dynamic uh, derivation uh, uh, actually uh, uh, how, how we compute dynamic derivation. So the idea is as follows. So I, 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 once we want to uh, create an, a, a derivation, we just can uh, make some application of inference rules. So you, you can we can drop to the, the, the proof some inference rules in, also in, in order to derive new sequence. And we, of course, can uh, add some elimination rules. And at each step of the derivation, we must upta update the statuses of all the sequence. So we must use a, some kind of evaluation process. The process is very simple. We just uh, go backwards uh, through, the, uh, to, through the proof and update the uh, statuses of each uh, sequence whether it is derived, whether it is eliminated by another, uh, by, by, according, by an attack of another derived sequence, or uh, whether it is accepted, and accepted the, accept, the set of accepted sequence are those who are derived and not eliminated. So this is a very simple procedure, procedure that revises the statuses of the, uh, of the uh, sequence in the derivation. And accordingly, what we can do is to ob ob obtain a, what we call dynamic derivation, uh, in which, again, it, it defined uh, inductively. I will not go through all the details. So the, 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 the idea is to extend a dynamic derivation by new introduce, uh, introducing tuples or eliminating tuples by keeping the um, the uh, derivation coherent, so we don't want that the attacking uh, tuples will be also eliminated. And we want to make sure that attack, uh, attacking sequence are not attacked by accepted sequence. By this, we keep the, uh, the, the uh, um, derivation rational. Okay, and then we say that the sequence is finally derived, is trusted, if it is accepted in a derivation, and there is no way of extending the derivation, that is adding, introducing, or elimination tuple, such that the, the, the tuple will be eliminated. If the tuple cannot be eliminated, then its sequence is finally derived. Okay? Uh, okay, so the idea generally is that the right sequence may not be inf inferred, they can be in fact only if they are finally derived in the in the sense that I described previously. Okay, and so for instance, in the previous example, Q is finally derived as I explained before, while P and not P cannot be finally uh, cannot be inferred because this it's, it's the sequence in tuple four and tuple six are not finally derived. You can always extend the derivation by new tuples that attack that attacks uh, these, uh, these uh, sequence. Here's a, a more uh, uh, maybe interesting example. Uh, 
suppose that we have a logic, sorry, a logic with a negation again. Suppose for this example that we don't have the double negation introduction, so P does not imply the double negation of P. Of P. That's for the for the sake of this uh, uh, example. And we have defeat, okay? The attack by defeat. So if the conclusion of the attacking um, a sequence implies the negation of some subset of the support of the attack sequence, then the attack sequence is eliminated. And suppose that we have a knowledge base that consists of P, not P, and so forth until uh, four negation of P. So we have uh, five assumptions, and let's denote by AI the sequence that consists of I uh, application of negation implies I application of negation. So for instance, A0 is P implies P, A1 is not P implies not P, A2 is not not P implies not not P, and so, and so forth and so on. So we see, actually we have this kind of uh, argumentation uh, frame. Note that the arrows are one direct in one direction. They cannot uh, go uh, through the other direction because again we assume that the double negation introduction rule does not hold in this case. Okay, so let's see what can we do. Uh, by using some kind of dynamic derivation, okay? So first thing that, that we can do is that to der derive A0, A1, and A2, again, by since they these are axioms. So P implies P, not P implies not P, and not not P implies not not P. Now we can derive A, a so now we can, a, a, sorry, a add uh, elimination rules. For instance, A2 attacks A1 by defeat. Okay, as a consequence, A1 is eliminated, but we still have A0 and A2 as accepted at this stage of the derivation. Okay, next we can derive A3. Okay, once we have A3, we can uh, use a direct defeat in order uh, the, the, the defeat in order to uh, 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 make introduce the the attacks of a3 on a2 and a1 on a0 okay so a according to direct defeat since we have a3 a3 attack a2 and a1 attacks a0 note that in this case the attack of A2 on, on A1 is unsuccessful. Why? Because A2 is eliminated. Okay, so the attacking sequence here is eliminated. Therefore, the, uh, the, the attack in according to tuple number four is unsuccessful. So we have two successful attacks in tuples number six and seven, and one unsuccessful attack in tuple number uh, four. So in this case, uh, uh, now the status, of, the status of, of A3 and A1 are accepted and A2 and A0 are eliminated. Now we can derive A4, okay? Now once we have A4, we can add two new attacks. A4 can attack A3 and A2 can attack A1. Note that according, once we can derive and introduce these attacks, the attacks by A1 one on A0 and of A3 on A2 are unsuccessful because both attackers, A1 and A3, are eliminated by the new attacks. You see, I don't, I'm not sure that you can see here, this is in gray and this is in, in, in uh, 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 this is uh, two kinds of grays, okay? So this is the black and this is gray, meaning that this is a, a, a real attack, and this is an unsuccessful attack. You can see it here in the, in the derivation, okay? So A, A, this should be, of course, A4 and A2 attack A1 and A3, and accordingly, um, the attack of A1 and A3 on A0 and A2 are unsuccessful anymore, okay? Now we can see that at this stage, A4 cannot be attacked anymore. Why? Because we don't have any sequence in the knowledge base that consisting of five negations. So there is no way to attack A4. Therefore, A4 is finally derived in, in this case. Okay? So A4 is finally derived. Okay? Once that A4 is finally derived, we know that its attacks on A3 
is always successful. Therefore, the only attack on A2 by A3 is unsuccessful. So we can conclude since A4 is finally derived, so A2 is also finally derived because the only attack on A2 is always counter attacked by a finally derived sequence. So A4, A2 is also finally derived. And for the same reason, A0 is also finally derived in according to this dynamic derivation. So we can, co can conclude that from KB in this case, we can infer uh, um, A0, A2, and A4, while we cannot infer neither A1 nor A3. This is the idea behind dynamic uh, derivations. Uh, some properties of the dynamic derivation, I will go through this very quickly. First of all, uh, if the knowledge base is conflict free, meaning that there are no attacks in this knowledge base, then uh, the uh, entailment relation is a conservative uh, extension of the, of the, the task and relation of the basic logic. Uh, if the basic logic is power consistent, meaning that from a, a contradiction, we cannot uh, infer any uh, conclusion. Then so is the entailment relation by the dynamic derivation. We have some restricted monotonicity. Of course, the, the entailment of dynamic der derivation is not monotonic, but we have some restricted forms of monotonicity. Uh, uh, so if the logic is uniform and it is contrapositive, and for instance, if we have a set of attack which is included in defeat and undercut, um, then if we can conclude Psi from KB and add, K, if we, sorry, if we can conclude Psi from KB1 and we add a, a new knowledge base which is unrelated to KB1 and to the conclusion, then we can see, see, uh, still conclude Psi from KB, KB1 and KB2. This means that we can add new information and still infer the same conclusion as long as the new information is unrelated to the previous set of assumptions. Uh, other property, crash resistance, though for those who are, who are familiar with these properties uh, introduced by Caminada, Carnielli and Dahl, uh, so there is no set of formula that common contaminating the entailment relation. So for no sets, it holds that for every irrelevant set T, uh, we have uh, uh, S implies Psi if and only if S and T implies Psi. This is called crash resistance. Um, the entailment relation, again, you assuming this, uh, this uh, setting, is cumulative in the sense of uh, Krauss, Lemon, Megiddo, uh, that, that it, it satisfies Cassius reflexivity, Cassius monotonicity, Cassius cut, left logical equivalence, and right weakening. Note, however, that it is not preferential because then the rule uh, or is not satisfied in this case. However, the uh, rationality postulate is satisfied by uh, this uh, uh, entailment relation. And finally, uh, probably more, uh, most importantly for our case, we have soundness and completeness with respect to the um, um, argumentation-based entailments. So re remember that we have this kind of entailment, so it implies by KB if, it for, if there is a sequence that is in the intersection of, the, of all the extensions from the same semantics, such that Psi is in the conclusion of the sequence. Uh, this is one kind of ent uh, argumentation based ent entailment. Then we can, on the other hand, take the dynamic proof system, which is based on LK together with undercut. And what we have is a theorem that says that the entailment, that the entailment relation, which is induced by dynamic derivation by LK and undercut, is the same as the entailment relation which is induced by grounded, preferred, and stable semantics. The intersections of this, uh, uh, of course, of this, uh, so the uh, skeptical uh, entailment based on grounded, preferred, and stable semantics. So, so this is one kind of soundness and completeness uh, result. 
Another uh, standard and completed result that we have is related to the other kinds of uh, skeptic of uh, skeptical entailment. Remember that we have a different kind of skeptical entailment saying that a psi from K, from K B if there for every and extensions there uh, there uh, there is an, a, a sequence whose conclusion is psi. So for for this case we also can. Uh, we may also have a sound and completeness uh, a result, but we have to uh, change a little bit the notions of a final derivation uh, in the in in in, uh, in the uh, in the uh, dynamic derivation system. What we have to do here is uh, in uh, instead of final derivation, we uh, look on, now on sequences that are sparsely finally derived. What what uh, we, we mean by sparse final derivation? If for every uh, uh, so sparse final derivation, uh, we mean if for there is uh, uh, there there is some a uh, gamma in KB such that the sequence. Uh, uh, okay, here it is. Here is the precise definition. Uh, the the circuit is partially finally derived in derivation if first it is accepted in the derivation, and there is as uh, for every extension of the derivation, there is a sequence whose conclusion there is an accepted sequence whose conclusion is psi. So the difference between sparsely finally derived and finally derived is that in finally deriva final derivation, we require that the same uh, sequence will be derived in any extensions of the derivation. Now in sparsely finally derived, uh, according to sparsely final derivation, we only require that there will be in, for any extension of the derivation, there will be a sequence whose conclusion is the same of the as, as the same as the original uh, sequence. In that case, we have another soundness and complete result saying that according to this new uh, kind of dynamic derivation in which we change the notion of final derivation to sparsely final derivation, according to this new entailment, we can uh, uh, we can obtain a soundness and completeness result with respect to the more uh, moderated versions of the uh, skeptical uh, reasoning by stable and preferred semantics. Why we need sparse final derivation? Let let, let me show you a, an example. So suppose that we have now K B, which consists of P and Q and not P and Q. Note that. Here, um, we cannot derive neither, uh, neither, for instance, P implies Q, uh, 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 P and Q implies Q. We cannot imply, uh, we cannot derive this because it is, uh, it is attacked by the other sequence, not P, uh, uh, sorry, because it, it, it is attacked uh, by uh, sequence number five. And similarly, we cannot uh, derive not P implies Q, uh, not P and P, Q implies Q, because it is attacked uh, again by sequence number two. So we don't, we don't, we cannot derive neither sequence number three nor sequence number six. But still, we we want to derive Q in this case because you see that Q is not related to the inconsistency in K B. Therefore, instead of having final derivation, because neither of three nor six is not finally derived, we change it to sparse final derivation and see what happens now. Three and six are not finally derived, but in each extension of the derivation, at least one of them must be accepted. Why this is so? Because their attackers, so five attacks three and two attacks six, the, their attackers uh, cannot be applied simultaneously. Okay, we cannot have simultaneous at attacks both on three and on six. So at each stage, at each stage of the derivation, and as well as at, at each extension of the derivation, at, 
at least one of these two sequences is accepted, and therefore we can fi uh, sparsely finally derive Q. Although we cannot uh, conclude a Q based on not on three, not based on three and not based on six, still we can derive Q in this case based on sparse final derivation because in each stage, at least each stage of the derivation, at least one of them is accepted, so we can conclude Q uh, in this case. Um, I want to say a few more words about maximal consistency. It will take me about so, 10 minutes. Do you? OK, great. If, if you, have you, you have been on for 45 minutes, so if 10 minutes would be would be perfect. OK, so, so, so just 10 minutes about the relations to to uh, to, to maximal consistency. It, uh, it, it turns out that not only we that we have soundness and completeness result here, but we can also relate these results of dynamic derivation and argumentation based entailment to a reason with maximal consistency. And let me show you how it is done. Um, so there is a, a lot of literature about uh, relation between um, uh, re uh, maximal consistency based reasoning and argumentation theory. And what we do in our papers, we extend some of these results to more general settings by adding entailments, uh, arbitrary propositional language, non classical logic, uh, etc. Um, so uh, the idea is as follows. We have, as we as we had uh, entailment for the argumentation based semantics, we can define similar uh, entailment relation with respect to maximally consistent set based semantics uh, reasoning. So we have again two kinds uh, of uh, skeptical entailment. One that is um, it's based on the intersection of the uh, uh, transitive closure of the intersections of all the maximally consistent subsets of the uh, set of premises. And the other uh, entailment, credulous, ent uh, sorry, skeptical entailment, is based on uh, uh, the the intersection of the task uh, of the uh, transitive closure of the a maximally consistent subset. So here in the, in the first definition, we first take the inter, we first look on the intersection of the maximally consistent subsets the, of the free formulae, and then take the intersection uh, the, the transitive closure. And according to the second definition, uh, we first take the transitive closures of uh, every maximally consistent subset, and only then take the intersections. Uh, again, obviously, the second uh, uh, definition is weaker than the first one. And of course, we can use uh, a third uh, definition, which is based on a, a, a credulous approach, according to which a, a conclusion follows from KB, uh, uh, if and only if it is uh, there it belongs to the union of the transitive closure of the maximally constituted uh, subsets. So just to give examples, According to if you take KB1, the, the, the running our running example, so we have two maximally consistent subsets here, PQ and not PQ, so their intersection is Q, and therefore we can derive, according to the first uh, skeptical definition of the entailment relation, we can derive Q here, but we cannot derive P, not P, or any, anything else R. Um, while if we take for instance, KB2, know that in, in this case, so if we have P and Q and not P and Q, so unlike the previous case, here the intersection of the maximally consistent subset is empty because, again, we have two uh, maximally consistent subsets, but their intersection is empty. So according to the, uh, the first definition of the skeptical entailment, we can only derive tautologies because we have empty intersections, while according to the more moderated uh, entailment, we can derive Q because Q is in the intersection of the transitive closure of each uh, maximally consistent subset. Okay, so uh, we can see that uh, the first definition, uh, the first entailment implies the second one, 
But of course, here we have a counter example that shows that the second entanglement uh, does not imply the first entanglement. How can we capture these, uh, these entanglements by dynamic derivation? So here is a, we have some uh, uh, results. We only have to extend our soundness and complete uh, our previous soundness and, and uh, completed uh, uh, results. So recall that uh, we have we had uh, the argumentation based uh, entailment, which are defined by uh, the semantic uh, the the uh, the, sem the Dungstein semantics. We have the entailment by the dynamic derivation. Here we can take the dynamic derivation by LK, uh, LK and uh, undercut. And now we have a new kind of uh, entailment relation, but that, that is based on um, a maximally consistent subset. Uh, and in the previous result, we relate the first two entailments, and now we can add actually the third entailment to our result. And the result shows that if we have a simple matter argumentation framework based on classical logic and undercut as the sole attack rules, then in this case, not only that the doomed styled entailment relation coincide with the, the, uh, the entailment based on dynamic derivation, but also in this case, we can capture also the, the entailment uh, that is based on reasoning with maximally consistent subset. And similar results hold for the other kind of uh, skeptical uh, reasoning. Okay, so now we have the other kind of skeptical reasoning that is based on the Dungstein semantics. Again, we have the entailment relation, which is based on dynamic derivation with sparsely sparse final der derivation. And now we have the third type of entailment, which is based on maximally consistent subset. So again, here we take the transitive, transitive closure and then we take the intersections of these closures. And the result shows that, again, not only that we have a, corres a correspondence between the argumentation-based entanglements and the dynamic-based, uh, dynamic proof system-based uh, uh, entanglement, but also we can uh, show here a correspondence uh, to the uh, um, skeptical entailment, entailment by uh, maximally consistent uh, subsets. Okay. Uh, so now, as I said, I will skip the postulate based study and uh, just jump to the conclusion. Uh, yes, okay. So here is the here are the conclusions and some words on ongoing work. So. What we, we, we saw is that we define uh, um, new types of argumentation-based uh, uh, argumentation frameworks based on sequence, and we show the correspondence between Dugstein semantics of those frameworks to dynamic derivations and to maximally uh, uh, reasoning with ma maximally consistent subset. I saw, I, I, I presented here only part of the results. There are all, also some other results that holds on, not only for classical logic, but also for uh, other kinds of logics. Uh, they appear in the, uh, in, in the papers that I uh, mentioned in the, in, the, in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, what we still have to do is uh, we have some results and uh, some, some of them are ongoing works, uh, some of them are future works. So as I mentioned before, we want to incorporate some priorities in order to, make, to allow some more flexibility in the, uh, in, in the attacks, in the attack rules. And uh, we want to add some hyper-sequent based argumentation, hyper-sequent sequence, hyper-sequence uh, are some uh, extended forms of uh, sequence that are use, useful for uh, fuzzy reasoning and uh, give, uh, of obtaining a cut-free proof system for some systems that, that, that don't have a cut-free uh, sequence-based uh, uh, proof systems. Therefore, uh, hyper-sequence are needed, for instance, uh, relevance logic RM and uh, uh, LC and uh, S5, the model uh, logic S5, etc. 
So we have some hypersequence based argumentation when we show some advantages of using hyper based uh, hyper sequence based uh, systems. Uh, this is uh, uh, we, we discussed this in, in a recently accepted papers in uh, Stadia Logica. Something that we still have to do is to extend our uh, uh, frameworks or our setting to first order languages and to obtain some corresponding uh, sound and complete dynamic proof systems and something else that it is very important, especially in the uh, context of argumentation uh, theory is to have some uh, rela relations to other uh, deductive uh, frameworks like ASPIC, uh, assumption based argumentation and uh, so forth. So that's it. I hope that uh, you managed to follow it, uh, although it was a bit quick, the presentation, but uh, thank you for your attention and uh, that's it. Thanks, Ofer. Brilliant. So I um, would like to give the chance uh, for any questions. Um, so please uh, let me uh, know if you want to uh, ask some questions by just writing your name on the chat. Um, I have, uh, I'll start with a very brief and probably uh, uh, straightforward question. You have mentioned some uh, structural properties of, of the calculus, and in particular, you have mentioned a form of uh, cautious cut. I yeah. was wondering whether you have been able to prove any uh, uh, cut elimination theorem of related to the cautious cut rule that you have. Uh, cut elimination theorem is it, 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 it's, it's problematic in general in uh, proof system for non-monotonic uh, system. Sure. Okay, so the, so in order to uh, what we can do uh, is to as I said it, it's kind kind of related to what I mentioned by hyper sequence. We what we can do is the, to use. Uh, hyper sequence and in, in case that we don't have cut elimination for the base logic, then, then we can incorporate hyper sequence, which are more complicated structures, but then we can obtain cut elimination, uh, elimination sequence for a, a, a result for the for the base logic. Uh, and, and based on it, have some uh, um, a result for the uh, for the uh, induced uh, entailment relation, but as I said, since the entailment relation, the upper low, uh, the upper logic, uh, in some sense, uh, is is uh, non-monotonic. We cannot have cut elimination because, uh, again, we cannot trust on lemmas as in new, as in monotonic uh, uh, logic because those lemmas or those. Uh, a preliminary result can be attacked by other uh, sequence. Okay, right. this is this is this is the problem. Sure. In okay. Yeah. For, for okay. non-monotonic uh, entailment relations, but again, we can assure cut elimination for many base logics in order of, again to, and this is of course very important in the context of argumentation uh, frameworks because we want to derive counter argument etc. without getting to uh, irrelevant uh, formulas. So cut elimination is very important uh, in order to, uh, it, it's a very important property of the base logic in order to really uh, uh, derive counter argument in a constructive way. Perfect, thanks. Um, any more questions? Uh, Marcello, please. Okay, offer. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. That uh, um, you know, as you said, partly I've already yes. listened to it in Vienna, but there is some new stuff which is quite interesting. And uh, a quick question: uh, talking about cut elimination, uh, where you say that cut elimination is very important, uh, can you see any reason why it is so? Uh, it is so important in uh, in your approach. Um, beyond uh, the subformula property, or is it related just to the fact that you want the subformula property? Because um, in fact, you can have the subformula property without eliminating cut. You don't need to eliminate it's, cut in that, order to have the subformula property. Yes, that's true. But but now I think that the, the main reason is indeed subformula property because 
uh, suppose that you want to, again, the main reason that I can imagine, again, in the context of argumentation frameworks, the main uh, motivation for this property, the cut elimination of subproper property, is again that in order if you want to derive in a in a constructive way or in a simple way a counter argument to uh, to to uh, give an argument, then you 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 can use this property in order to to narrow your uh, search space. Okay, you don't have to go beyond the the sub uh, formulas that appears in the argumentation itself, or uh, in fact in the in in the support in the in, in the in the in the support of the of the of the argument. So you can you only look on the support of the arguments, look on their sub uh, formulas, and then try to construct some uh, counter arguments. This is the main reason that I see uh, for 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 having such. Uh, this kind of uh, properties in the context of argumentation. So basically, the sub formula property. Basically, the sub formula I think property. So, right? Yes, yes. I yeah. So. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, but maybe know. there will be other. I don't know. That's what, I oh, think. no. On the other hand, one can observe that uh, if you keep, uh, uh, you know, if you don't have cut elimination, because in some logics, you, as you mentioned, you cannot have cut elimination, and uh, it's not easy, at least unless you do something uh, really. Complex uh, the level of the proof theory, like uh, using labeled systems or hyper sequence or whatever. But um, what you can do if you keep cut is not only you can many times restrict it to sub formula, but you can actually uh, bound the search space anyway. Although uh, you might want to consider formula which are not exactly sub formula of the premises or the conclusion, but still in a bounded space. And this sometimes might be very useful to shorten proofs, to have shorter proofs. I think, is it related to your work uh, about uh, restricted re resources? Uh, yes, somehow. Yes, yes, it is definitely. But yeah. the point is that uh, if you have, for instance, uh, uh, um, a search space, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a formula on which you can apply the cut rule, which is not restricted to the set of sub formulae, but can be um, uh, larger than that, provided that this space, this set is polynomially bounded in the, si in the sides of the original uh, input, then uh, you can still have, uh, you know, um, efficient procedures uh, uh, with shorter proofs, actually, because sometimes, uh, you know, a cut elimination, of course, can lengthen proofs by an exponential factor. So this is uh, one of the reasons why, in some cases, uh, using systems with cut may be more convenient than using systems without cut. But that's, of course, it's a matter of efficiency. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, any any more questions? I, I have another quick question, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, sure. uh, I remember we had uh, some exchange about. Um, uh, the concept that the notion of consequence relation underlying this work, and then as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, you assume that the law, the consequence relation is, is Taskian. Of course, there are, um, as we said in our uh, email exchange, there are two uh, ways of looking at the consequence yes. relation, right? Yes. And um, if you look at the sign, at the kind of um, entailment, so to speak, relation, which is given by the sequence, by the valid sequence, you can prove. In some logics, like relevance logic, you don't have a monotonicity, whereas, of course, if you consider a weak, um, a, a, a wider notion of consequence relation, uh, as we said in our email exchange, in the sense that, uh, um, you know, a, a, a may be a relevant consequence of the set gamma, uh, if, if it is a uh, entailed uh, in the sense of the uh, sequence calculus uh, of relevant yeah. logic uh, from a subset of gamma, right? That's a, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, does it make you think? Do you think this assumption that you make about uh, monotonicity uh, and uh, and uh, that does it somehow limit uh, your uh, uh, um, the landscape of the logics you can take into consideration? Or you think this kind of uh, uh, trick uh, like saying, okay, my consequence relation will be only uh, referred to entailment from subsets can be done for any logic. I mean, 
It's, uh, I'm not sure about that. This is I, I, I could be. I don't know. I, I haven't think about it. Yet. I thought about it. But uh, as I said uh, during our discussion, I think that as it is defined now, we, we managed to capture quite a broad number of logics, including relevant logics in the in the in the in the sense that I described uh, to you in, the, in in our emails, which are. Task and logic. They 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 intend them to satisfy all the three requirements. Uh, so in that sense, I think that at least we are able to capture all the other logics that are currently uh, discussed within the framework of argumentation theory. Okay, so mm -hmm. in that respect, uh, our approach is broad enough. Of course, there are, there we can. Uh, uh, extend it even further. We have to carefully check uh, check the consequences of weakening the requirement about the base logic. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, my my uh, question. Yes. Are you sure that you really need that condition for your proof? I, I think that for many of the proofs we explicitly use monotonicity. Okay, so okay. really need it. We really need it for for many of the proofs. I'm not sure for that for all of them. I will have to check. But for but, but there are some, there are several. Places in the proofs that we really assume monotonicity of okay. the case logic. Yes, okay. but as I said, um, the, the the framework is broad enough to capture all the other. Well, of course, of course, it is broad. Yes, yes. No, I was just wondering whether it would be a limitation or not. I don't know because there was a lot of discussion yes. uh, in the night. Yes, maybe for specific uh, properties. We can relax some of the relax further the assumptions or some of the assumptions assumptions about the base logic, but again uh, this has to be checked. Okay, sure. okay, thanks. All right, any anyone other questions? Well, if not, I suggest we all thanks uh, offer again. Uh, we really, really uh, wish we could go for a beer now together. Uh, it must be. <laughs> so it must have, be. Uh, uh, yeah, artificial. Yes, yes. Something like uh, virtual beer, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So thanks, Offer, for, uh, uh, for your for talk. Sure. And uh, we look forward to inviting you again uh, sometime soon in, in Milan for real. Thank you very much. Okay, if you stay there a couple of minutes, uh, we can uh, just. Okay. Uh, Say goodbye properly, right? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you uh, to everybody for uh, for uh, attending. Thank you very much again. Thank you, bye. So now, Giuseppe, I think that you can take over again. I don't know, you don't have to... Nice. Unless you want... Uh... Uh, you, just, uh, you just eat again the same... Uh, button as before the share button. Ah. Paolo, can you stop the recording? I think I cannot stop it in the meanwhile. Just a moment. Okay. <laughs>